Hello, welcome to this new tutorial dedicated to Avid Pro Tools, one of the most advanced DAWs to edit sound. Make your first compositions and build entire songs in a professional environment. It is available under a subscription plan for both Windows and Mac OS with a 30-day trial version. As you open Pro Tools, the dashboard panel shows up with several options to start. With Recent, you can open your latest Pro Tools projects or sessions, or browse for others with Open at the bottom. Go to Create to start from a new session from scratch, defining name and audio options at the bottom, such as file type, sample rate, and bit depth. Make sure to check Create from Template above to start from several ready-made templates. In this video, we just start from a completely blank session to see how this software works. The new session opens on a new Pro Tools session composed by a big preview called Workspace Browser, showing your main session content and options. The Edit window on top with playback options and editing tools and the Tracks window on the left with the complete list of tracks inside your session. If any of these panels are missing, make sure to reopen it from the Window tab. Now let's see how to import audio samples. If you have installed the Pro Tools libraries, these can be found on Window, New Workspace, Soundbase, from which you can import any sample by clicking and dragging it into the session. In the same way, you can click and drag any file you have directly inside the session. All these imported samples are collected within rows called audio tracks, showing each file as an independent block called clip with proper audio waveforms shown for each stereo channel. To play back the track's content, click on the gray timeline above to fix the starting point as a blue arrow and then use either the spacebar key or the player above to play and stop. Restarting from the same point. Make sure to enable Insertion Follows Playback to update the starting point every time you stop the playback. If you do not hear anything, make sure to set the output source on the left, under I forward slash O. Click on the second slot and go to Output to select your speakers properly. Under I forward slash O, you can click on the first slot to set any input source, for example, to record from your microphone. In this case, set it up and arm its track by clicking on its record button. That starts blinking. At this point, click on the main record button on top to get ready for the recording and then click on play to record while getting all the other tracks in play, using stop to finish your recording. Consider that the content from non-armed tracks won't be recorded as well. The time placement is represented by a vertical marker on the timeline and shown on the display on top in the most common units, such as bars, beats, ticks, and seconds. Next to these, you can change the unit to use. In particular, the main notification also changes the unit of the session timeline. The conversion of the bars and beats into seconds is made by the speed rate, or tempo, measured in beats per minute, or BPM, on the extreme right. The more this is, the faster the session rhythm becomes, which means that the timeline in bars and beats gets adjusted in time. If the timeline uses seconds, this won't change thanks to this absolute reference. To quickly check the timeline content, hold down the Alt or Option key and use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out, whereas hold down the Shift or Option plus Shift key to scroll in time. Now let's see how to edit clips with the tools and the edit modes in the top left corner. With the Grabber tool, you can click and drag any clip to move it in time or in another track. The way the clip gets moved depends on the edit mode selected on the extreme left. With Grid, you can move the clip by snapping to the timeline grid that you can turn off or on, or adjust in steps above.
whereas enable shuffle to move clips by removing any time gap between them without overlapping and cutting content. With Spot, set the time placement by typing in directly. In this video, we are going to use the slip mode, which allows to move any clip freely without any snapping. Moreover, you can right-click on the grabber tool and enable object to work with multiple clips. Click and drag on the timeline to select all the clips falling within your selected region and then move these together. To adjust the clip's duration in time, enable any trim tool. With standard, you can click on any point of the waveform or click and drag from the clip edges to shrink the clip by removing part of its content. Whereas choose TCE to adjust the clip duration by changing its playback speed without affecting the clip pitch. Use Scrub to play while cutting the clip. Very useful to catch the exact point. Choose Loop to stretch the clip by putting it in loop. With the Selector tool, you can click and drag on any clip waveform to select and edit part of it. For example, you can cut, copy, and paste any clip entirely with Control or Command and X, C, and V. If you do so after using the Selector tool, only the selected region will be affected. You can undo any action with Control or Command and Z. You can enable most of these tools together by enabling their external contour. On the left side, you get several options to manage the content from each track. Each track has its own name and several buttons at the bottom, such as the record button, the S or solo button to mute all the tracks except the current one, and the M or mute button to mute the current track. On Track View Selector, decide how to preview the track clips. By default, this is set to Waveform, showing the audio waveforms of each clip. Switch to Blocks to show clips as simple blocks, or to Volume to show how the volume level evolves in time. By default, its envelope is constant, but you can reshape it by enabling the Grabber tool and clicking and dragging on the curve. This way, you will change the volume level in time. Realizing an automation that is indicated in yellow color. You can also enable the pencil tool to draw the envelope freely for more complex automations. Make sure to right click on the pencil tool to drop lines, triangles, and much more. From the track view selector, you can also select the mute and the panning curve and also click on the envelope icon to show or hide multiple automations with the plus and the minus buttons. Consider to play back in loop in case you are working on specific regions within the timeline. If you click and drag on the gray strip line, you select a limited region to play back once. You can play it continuously by right-clicking on the play button and enabling to loop. Pro Tools includes a professional mixer to control and adjust the content from all the tracks of your session. You can open the mixer from Window, Mix. Consider that most of its options are present next to each track on the main preview. In this case, you can use the rectangular icon to show or hide the sections you need. Under Inserts, you can click on any slot to apply adjustment and effect plugins to either all the stereo channels of the track with multi-channel or to a single channel independently with multi-mono. These plugins are applied to all the clips of the current track in the same way. Use the dedicated interface to adjust the plugin properties, selecting any preset to pick any ready template. Under Sends, click on any slot to send the track output to a specific bus channel, such as a physical speaker as output, or a dedicated audio bus for advanced post-processing. 
Below the input slash output sources, you can adjust the audio volume, measured in dB, and the stereo panning. This is important when you have to correct any distortion, represented as red levels on the meter. With Pro Tools, you can also work with MIDI compositions. MIDI clips are made of notes representing melodies, percussions, and much more, each with proper tone and length. Each note gets a proper kind of audio depending on the instrument or the virtual synthesizer or synth connected to the corresponding track. To start composing, create a new track by right-clicking on the Tracks panel on the left and going to New. At this point, choose either a MIDI track, if you compose and send to an external sampler connected, or select Instrument Track to work within Pro Tools with the help of a virtual synth. In this video, we see how to compose with synthesizers only. Once the track is in place, click on any insert slot and go to Plugin, Instrument to select the synthesizer and transform your future notes into melodies or percussion. Tune the basic melody generated by the synth with its dedicated interface and enable the pencil tool to drop notes within the instrument track. This becomes a piano roll so that you can drop the right notes within the correct octave. Make sure to extend the track by dragging its edges if necessary. On the left, make sure that the output source is defined to hear any output sound. You can edit and adjust notes with the edit tools and modes from the left and the track options, just like audio clips. You have different track view options here. The notes view shows the instrument track as a piano roll to add and edit notes. Switch to blocks or clips to manage the MIDI clips entirely with all their notes inside. And select velocity to set the intensity of each note. You can also adjust the MIDI volume, set how to mute and unmute it, or even adjust any synth property in time. Pay attention when adjusting the tempo. By default, the instrument tracks use ticks as time-based selector, so that the notes are played faster or slower depending on the tempo BPM. Switch to samples time-based to fix the notes in the absolute reference of seconds. To save and export your session, Use Control or Command and S or go to File, Save As. Whereas to export your session into an audio file, go to File, Bounce Mix, and set its file type and format, bit rate, and sample rate. Finally, click on Bounce to start rendering. Pro Tools exports the whole session until the last clip finishes. To export only part of the session, enable the selector tool and click and drag over all the tracks and clips you want to export in time before going to Bounce Mix. This also works when you want to export a single track. Thank you very much for watching this video. Visit our YouTube channel and our official website to discover more outstanding guides for free.